Welcome to the Yoga Challenge, where we're going to do seven days of yoga for 15 minutes at a time. I'm so glad you guys are here with me. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Heather. Let's start by coming into an easy seated position, crossing one leg in front of the other. And it doesn't matter which leg is in front. Let's start grounding our sitting bones, the bony parts in our tail down towards the ground. We elongate the spine over the hips. Let our hands come towards our knees. Crown of the head reaches high towards the ceiling. And let the shoulders come up towards the ears and then let them fall down the back. As we inhale, we take a nice deep breath expand the belly, expand the rib cage. And then as we exhale, let's begin to circle our torso over towards the right knee, around center, over to the left knee, and all the way back up. Keeping in the same direction, two more rotations. Exhale, round down, to the right, over to the left, and then center. Last one. As we meet in center, let's find that same rotation, but come over to the left side first. Final rotation, nice big exhale. And as we elongate our spine back over our hips, Let's bring the bottoms of our feet to the mat. Our fingertips come behind us looking at our heels. And let the knees windshield wiper back and forth. So start by letting them drop over towards the right. And then come center and drop over to the left. Keeping ourselves as lifted as possible. Let them come side to side. We're allowing one hip to externally rotate as the opposite hip internally rotates. So as we work this motion or any motion through class, we should never feel any pain. Maybe there's some discomfort, but know the difference between what should feel kind of normal or if something should make us stop. As we come over to the right, let's hold to the right this time. We're gonna grab, we're gonna bring that left knee towards the right foot, knee in line with the ankle joint on that left hand side. Try to ground through both sitting bones. If this is enough, stay right here, or we're gonna to begin to work into hip extension. So take a nice big inhale, and then as we exhale, we're gonna rise, lift the hips and squeeze the glutes. Slowly control down. Adding movement to those hips, nice big exhale. Slowly release. Two more. Open through the hips, squeeze the glutes, keep the spine safe. Last one. And then as we come all the way back down, let's rotate to the other side. Settling in. Finding knee in line with the ankle on that right hand side. Remember, we can stay here. It's still a hip opener, staying right here. Or if we feel comfortable, extend a nice big inhale. Exhale, rise. Inhale, lower. If you need to keep your fingertips towards the ground as you come up, do so. If you can keep them off the ground the whole time, go ahead. Last one. And then as we come around, let's begin to find our very first downward facing dog. So we'll come onto all fours, curl our toes underneath, press the hips up, and begin to pedal out the feet. Our hands are spread wide, our elbows pull towards one another. Gently let the heels come down towards the ground, and then let the heels Rock over to the right hand side. Slowly come up and round over towards the left. Inhale, center. Exhale, 
let them fall. Keeping our shoulders looking at the ground. One more, opposite side. Slowly come in. Right leg lifts behind us in line with our hips, toes looking at our shin. The knee draws towards the nose as we plant the foot into lunge pose. Maybe you need to take a hand to ankle to get there. Drop the back knee, top of the foot to the ground, low lunge. Squeeze the glute muscle. We're going to take the right hand right to the center of the thigh, roll onto the pinky and open up. Add some pressure through the palm. Last deep breath. Reground the right toe, plant the right hand, curl the back toes back to downward facing dog. Left leg lifts, looking for alignment. Knee comes in, find the low lunge, drop the back knee, top of the foot. Right hand plants in line with the shoulder. As we roll onto the left pinky toe, using the palm of the hand to press away. Last deep breath. Slowly come in. Bring the left leg back around to all fours. Now two options depending on how you feel. So maybe you wanna come into child's pose which still opens up the hips. If it's okay for you and your knees, you're gonna flatten out the tops of the feet. Walk the torso up over the hips. Fingers will come down and what I want you to do is really squeeze your glutes and then imagine you're lengthening your thigh muscles towards the front of the mat. If you can lift slightly, go ahead. But what we want to do is make sure we keep this rib cage down so we don't want to flare up. So keep the rib cage down and just extend through the quadriceps. Squeeze the glutes. Slowly release down. Circle sweep the arms overhead and let's come back to downward facing dog. Right leg lifts behind us. Coming into a wide lunge, we take the right knee and foot to the outside of the right wrist. From here, we're gonna step our left leg in to a wide squat. Now, as we come into our squat position, I want you to only work your range of motion. So what we're looking for is that your toes are forward and your arches are lifted. So the moment we start to see those toes splay out, then we want to stop. So maybe the range of motion is here, and that's okay. Let's lift the hips. Left leg comes back to plank pose. Right leg comes back. Press all the way back. Left leg lifts. Draws to the outside of the left wrist. Wide lunge. Coming into our wider squat, right leg comes in. Find your range of motion. If you have blocks handy, sometimes those come in handy, right? Just to sit on. We can still open the hips here. That's completely fine. I'd rather work somebody work where their body is versus trying to force. Come all the way up. Right leg comes back in line. Left leg comes back. Plank pose back into our downward facing dog. Well done. Drop the knees to the ground, all fours. Taking the right leg, we're gonna thread it through the body. So we come all the way through and we're gonna fight this left hip to come down. When the right leg comes through, we have a couple of options. So we may have to keep it a little farther away from the arm and if you have a range of motion through your hips, go ahead and pull it a little closer to the wrist and pull the right toes towards the shin to activate. Remember the breathing. Slowly pull the right leg back through. Coming to the left hand side, thread through the body. Let the leg go where it may, maybe close to the wrist, maybe farther away. 
We're gonna to try to close the right hip bone to the ground. And then we're gonna peel those toes towards the shin. Maybe if you want, you can take your right hand and add a little pressure. Your hip might not like it, but it is an option. Keep playing around with those hips. Pull the left hip back slightly, right hip forward. Come all the way back out. Curl the toes, downward facing dog. Pedal through the feet. Prepping partial pigeon. So we're not going to come into the full expression today. Right leg lifts. We draw forward, knee comes in towards the nose as we turn the shin parallel to the front of the mat. Keeping our back leg lifted. Exhale all the way back. Two more times. Inhale. Exhale, knees comes to nose. We bring the shin down to the ground. Now, for some of us, it may be tucked, and that's okay. If you can get it parallel to the mat, to the front of the mat, please do so. Kick back. Last one. Pull in, partial pigeon. Drop that left hip bone towards the ground too. It may want to open, but we want to keep on looking down. Peel back. Release the right leg. Left leg lifts. Same thing, opposite side. Pull in. Release the shin. Play around with the hips. And then release back. Two more times. Come on in. Now, if you are like me, one side is tighter than the other. It's just, my left side is just straight up sketchy. So, if you are in the same boat as me, then you're not alone. One more time. Come on in. And then let's peel back, drop the leg, bend the knees, walk our feet in between our hands, forward fold. Let's come into our squat one more time. So depending on your hip range of motion, if you can keep the feet a little closer and directly underneath the hip, go ahead. If you need to come a little wider like me, go ahead. Remember, you're finding range of motion. You're finding your stopping point. And then slowly lower down to the ground. Kick our legs out in front of us. Give them a shake. Find those sitting bones. Coming into seated spinal twist. So, right leg is going to come in. We're going to cross the right leg over the left, but what we're really looking here is for that really long spine still. So when we cross, if you notice you buckle right back to that low back and that chest comes forward, keep the leg here, okay? Um, uh, don't cross. Just work where you're at. We're gonna ground that right foot and push away so that we can really feel grounded through both sides of the glutes. Hug in with the left arm, right arm comes directly behind our back, and then inhale, lengthen the crown of the head. Exhale, belly button turns over to the right as we gaze over the shoulder. Slowly come back to center. Right leg lengthens, left leg comes in. Find your path. Like I said, what we care more about is your position. So if we have to advance and we lose the spine, you're better off staying without, the, without progressing. Pull up the leg. As far up that thigh as you can get it. Sit up nice and tall. Press the foot away on the left-hand side. Hand comes behind us to help us sit up nice and tall. Inhale. Exhale, twist over to the left, gaze over the left shoulders. And 
as we come center. Lengthen both legs one more time. So we're gonna do that one more time and we're gonna add on, we're gonna work baby grasshopper. So we're gonna do seated spinal twists and if what I start to show isn't for you, you stay there and just do it one more time. And you can even do half Lord of the Fishes. So there'll be three options. Find which feels fun for you. So right leg comes in. We cross, we don't cross, we find what works. So if you're taking seated spinal twists, remember you're hugging in, sitting up tall, and looking out over that right shoulder. If you'd like to progress to half Lord of the Fishes, that left leg will come underneath, heel towards your backside. But then you wanna ground and really root that right hip down. Okay. Baby grasshopper. Right arm comes in and around towards the outside of the left foot. Left hand comes in line with the hip and then just bring it out slightly. Push the heel away on the left foot, toes to shin. And then we're gonna lift. Really ground through that right foot. Push through the heel, toes to shin, baby grasshopper, three breaths. And then wherever we're at, whichever pose, we're gonna unravel, lengthen. I'm just gonna switch around so the view is it is the same. So this time left leg comes in, crosses over the right. Find your path, seated spinal twist, half lord of the fishes, or baby grasshopper. So baby grasshopper. We come in, we wrap around the outside of the foot. Right hand comes to the hip and slides out. And then we rock onto that left foot. We lift the hip, push through the heel. Three breaths. Slowly come all the way back down if you're in baby grasshopper. And then regardless of what pose you're in, let's begin to come out, lengthen our legs, give them a shake, and then come around back into that easy seated pose. Day one is complete. You guys did wonderful. I can't wait to see you tomorrow. Nice big inhale, arms overhead. From my home to yours, namaste.